forest gives us light. It gives us oxygen that lets us breathe, that soaks up the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. It gives us wood. Wood is the future of the way we need to build with materials grown by the sun, materials that allow us to build increasingly bigger buildings in urban environments, tall buildings using advanced new wood techniques. All the world over, there's interest in building this way, and yet there's very little information out there. Now we're gonna change that. We're gonna bring global education to the world through timber online education. The teaching platform we're building will ultimately deliver very high level, broad based education to the wider public, as well as very, very detailed, highly technical information that's desperately needed in order for professionals, be they designers, be they builders, be they owners, or be they the public systems that supervise buildings, they ultimately have to have this incredible technical knowledge to make sure that we do this well and we do it safely. It'll be available for free, it'll be available in different languages, and it'll be available to everyone to build more environmentally sound buildings that for the next century will help us soak up carbon just as the forest does, instead of emitting it as we have for the last century. We used to know how to build with wood. Back in the early 1900s, many buildings, primarily industrial buildings, were built with mass timber, with the Industrial Revolution and the rise of steel and concrete, timber fell out of use as a real primary structural material. And so really in the last 10 years here in North America, we've started to see mass timber resurge. There's a lot of interest in how can we actually take that resource and really start building big buildings with mass timber again. And I firmly believe that building with timber is the future. The world of timber engineering is evolving very quickly, pushing timber to become a truly high-tech material with very sophisticated connection systems, very sophisticated fabrication equipment. We have now built almost any kind of building with wood, airports, hospitals, museums, uh, university buildings, and now high-rises. What we're finding is that there are very few designers as well as uh, contractors uh, who are well-versed with the material. As structural engineers, we have to deal with fire, we have to deal with acoustics, we have to work on integrating services, which means that the knowledge that we need to design with exposed wood structures is a lot greater and a lot more specialized than it might be with other materials. But the information is often difficult to get. As an architect, we face challenges of meeting clients or consultants that doesn't have a lot of deep knowledge towards wood. We spend time educating them and showing them uh, the wood properties and how they're being constructed. With Toll, we provide a forum for them to be able to understand how the construction takes place. What's it going to take? The production is coming online. We've demonstrated we can compete with concrete and steel and build superior buildings and faster buildings and buildings that, that meet our new environmental goals. But we haven't really achieved a critical mass with engineer wood structures. There's some interesting projects, there's a lot of interest, but it's gonna hit a point where all of a sudden developers and builders who are traditionally quite conservative and very risk averse are going to hit a comfort level. As president of a real estate development company, we're very keenly interested to learn more and understand what timber frame construction can do for our industry. I think there's a big psychological barrier that needs to be overcome, and the marketplace in particular needs to understand the difference between what is a mass timber building versus a wood frame house. If we can get more and more examples of where mass timber is fully exposed, that, in my mind, is a, is a wonderful opportunity for us to re-educate the market about what timber can do as a quality of living space, too. The beauty and the challenge of this is that there's no single voice that will make this change. The only way the change happens is if it's a collective. It'll be driven from development groups or, or design groups or construction groups or even regional governments that say this is important but it's already growing organically and increasing in scale.
And what we still lack is that sharing of information across disciplines and across country boundaries effectively. And TOW should solve that kind of problem um, by really bringing the diversity of the world's voices together.